In this video, we'll be building a binomial interest rate tree in Excel. And don't worry, it's not as complicated as it appears at first. We'll break it down and make it quite easy to understand. So what you see on the top of your screen is just a timeline. So this will continue throughout the whole model that I'm about to build. So column D will always represent today times zero. Column E will always represent a year from today. Column F will always represent two years from today. And G will represent three years from today. What you're seeing below that is the par rate. And what this says is that if I wanted to buy a bond priced at par, so exactly $100, I could buy that bond and it would yield me a coupon rate of 1%. But if I wanted to buy a two-year bond priced at par of $100 exactly, um, that would yield 1.2%. And then the three-year would yield 1.3%. Now let's get into building out our interest rate tree. So first, we're going to have to find what would be our one-year forward rate exactly today. That will just always be equal to the one-year spot rate. That never changes. But what we need to do now is estimate our lower bound for the one-year forward rate starting one year from now. And we can just guess 2%. But don't worry, later in this video, we will um, get the actual correct value for that. And then what we need to do is find the upper bound. So what this is going to be is just going to be equal to the lower bound multiplied by E, but in Excel we can use the function EXP times 2, and then the interest rate volatility. So this is the standard deviation of the interest rates. And so when we find in these binomial interest rate trees uh, upper bound or a lower bound, we're always saying that the upper bound above, you know, from one dip to the other is always going to be two standard deviations apart. Okay, so now we've handled the one year forward rate starting one year from today. But this one, let's just highlight it so that we know we need to come back to it and calibrate a correct value, which we'll do later on. And then now we can estimate a lower bound for um, the one year spot rate tar starting two years from today. And let's just guess that it's gonna be 2.5% and we can just use the same format here because we still need to find out the difference. Um, but then what we can do is we can take this formula that we made here and find out what would be the, um, the estimate above that. And then we can paste this formula one more time. So each one is just gonna be two standard deviations higher than the previous one. And what we're saying with this, um, these trees really is just that, um, so we're starting with this forward rate and we're saying there's a 50% chance that the forward rate in one year could go to this value and there's a 50% chance that the forward rate could go to this value one year from today. But um, this is just academic stuff, like this doesn't exist in the real world. Why would there only be two potential interest rates a year from now? And why would they both be a 50% probability? So this, this is all just academic stuff anyways. So then let's say that um, it ended up going to this forward rate. So now what we're saying is that there's a 50% chance one year from today that it could go to this forward rate from that one. Or 50% chance that it could fall, go downwards to that one. So that's that's really how this interest rate tree looks in just the sheer academic sense. Um, so now in order to actually calibrate this tree, we're gonna have to start with a one year par bond. So we're just gonna build out this cash flow schedule. So at time zero, we're actually not gonna receive any cash flows, but at time one, we will receive this 1% uh, par rate. Um, multiply it by the, the $100 value plus an additional $100. So if we bought that one year par bond, we would just receive $101 a year from now. And then we can discount this back to the present value today by taking that value and dividing it by one plus the um, value in our tree, right? That one year forward rate starting exactly today. And that just gives us $100. So now we need to build out the two-year par bond. But the cash flow schedule is going to look a little bit different. So, you know, today, you're zero. We're not going to get any money. But then at time one, we're actually going to get that 1.2% uh, multiplied by that $100. So we'll get $1.20. And then two years from now, that's when the bond actually matures. We'll get that $1.20. But then we'll add 
$100, right? Because it's repaying the notional, so we'll also get $101.20. Uh, but now we need to build out this tree. So there's, uh, in both cases of interest rate paths, we're going to get this $120 or $101.20. So we can just put that here and we can put that here. But now we need to discount it back. So we're just going to say that the present value at time one of that value is actually equal to this, this amount we're going to get paid at maturity divided by one plus this upper bound interest rate. So one plus 2.7%. There we go. And then we can also just take this formula and paste it down here. So now this bottom formula is taking that 101.2 and it's dividing it by 1.02 or 1.2%. But then we need to discount it all the way back to today. So this one, we're going to say this value equals 0.5 because, right, there's a 0.5 probability of the interest rate movement going up and 0.5 probability of it going down. So we'll say equals 0.5 multiplied by this value plus 0.5 multiplied by this value plus don't forget this coupon that we're going to receive at time one so this is basically our expected value at time one everything i just did in this whole parenthesis here and then we're going to discount it back by that one year forward rate starting exactly at time zero so one plus one percent okay but what we want is this bond to be priced at par. We see that the value of this bond at time zero is $99.09. .09. It needs to be $100. So what we can do is go up to the data tab in the what if analysis, we see goal seek. So we want to set the value of cell D17 to exactly $100. And we want to do that by changing this one year uh, forward rate starting one year from today on the lower bound. So we calibrate that and we find that um, in order for this two-year par bond to be priced at par, this lower bound needs to be 1.19%. So we're, we've handled this two-year bond, but now we need to handle a three-year bond in order to actually find what this rate would be. Okay, so now we're going to build out our cash flow schedule just one more time. Obviously today we're not receiving any money if we buy this bond. But one year from today, we would receive the 1.3% par rate multiplied by the par amount. So we get a buck 25. Oh yeah, let me let me break this out so it's easier to see that value. So we'll get a buck 25. Um, we'll get the same value in year two. Oh, let me lock that in really quick. So we'll get the same value in year two. But then in year three, we're going to get that value plus the $100 notional when the bond fully matures. Okay, so, so now we're getting 101.25 at the end. So now we're just going to build out another tree. So we'll paste our formula here, we'll paste it here and here. So we have to discount these values back by all these potential interest rates that we could be at, at the, starting at year two. So we'll take the uh, 101.25 and divide it by one plus the interest rate if the rates were to rise two consecutive years and find that present value. And then we can do the same thing for the other present or for the other interest rate paths. So like here, we'll see that we're discounting by this rate and here we're discounting by this rate. But now we need to find um, where will we be at in expected present value terms at the um, beginning of year one? So we can do a similar similar formula as we did right here, but we'll, we'll just we'll just rewrite it. So we'll say this value equals 0.5 times this value plus 0.5 times this value because 50% probability of going up or down. And then we'll add the expected coupon value that we're gonna get right there. Let's lock that cell in. And then we will divide by one plus this interest right here. And that gives us a value of 97.08. And then we can take this formula and paste it right here. 
And let's just make sure everything checks out. So we're saying a 50% probability of either of these two values, plus we're getting this 125 coupon, and we're discounting by the lower bound interest rate. And then we can actually basically take this one uh, and, and just paste it down, but I'll, I'll, just, I'll just do it one more time just for, just for uh, learning's sake. So we'll say this value today is equal to 0 0.5 times this value plus 0.5 times this value plus that 125 coupon we're going to receive one year from today. And we're going to divide the whole thing back by the one year forward rate as of the time zero. And that gives us this value of 98030. But again, this is not $100. We need it to be priced at par. So what we're going to have to do is use that goal seek function one more time and say we want to change D cell D24 so that the value that it is is $100 because it needs to be priced at par. And we're going to do that by changing this uh, lower bound on the uh, two-year interest rate or on the, t the second year of the interest rate tree. We hit OK. And we find that this value should actually be 0.98%. And then here is our final interest rate tree. Um, if you want to play around with the Excel file that I created in this video, uh, feel free to hit the automatic download link in the description. And uh, thank you for watching.